Hello and welcome to the comprehensive camping guide. So in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to camp like a pro and you'll be able to beat players a lot better than you by doing this. So I'll divide this into five parts. So first will be just a little bit of an introduction about myself. Next, I'll be telling you about what weapons you're going to want to be using. Then I'm going to be teaching you about the grooves in sandbags, which not a lot of people know about and how to use them. And after that, I'll be able, I will teach you how to pick location and when you should pick a locational camping spot over a sandbag. And after that, I'll just be giving you some general tips. So to start out, I'll tell you a little bit about myself so you know I'm qualified to teach this lesson. So I've been playing Ninja.io for about a year under a lot of different names. Um, probably my most famous name was Maxin, where I was the most infamous camper in the server. And uh, I beat a lot of players who are a lot more skilled than me by camping. And hopefully in this video, I'll be able to teach you two as well. Um, I deactivated my account for a little bit when I tried to get out of camping to see what it'd be like. I played under Speechless for a bit, and I did actually really well, but I got bored of it, and so here we are again. <laughs> so to start out, I will tell you about which weapons are going to be best used. So for your primary weapon, you're almost always going to want to be choosing Barrette. So the reason for this is the main strength of Barrette is obviously it's a one-shot weapon, most of the time at least. Um, its main weaknesses are it takes a bit longer to aim, you need to be more accurate with your shots, and when you're reloading, you're exposed and um, an easy kill. So what happens when you camp, though, is you kind of negate those two weaknesses because by being in cover, you have time to reload and time to aim. Alright, so I'm just going to demonstrate the power of Barrette while in a sandbag. And so to get on to the secondary weapons as well, so in a map like this, I chose Chainsaw, I don't know why I gave me RPG. Um, in a map like this, you definitely want a Chainsaw. They're going to be coming into your sandbags and you're going to need it to defend yourself. I learned that the hard way. Um, so as you can see, I mean, you have a lot of time to aim. And really, because you have a lot of time to aim, no other weapon can come close to Barrette. You can spam a rifle or something, but a Barrette's always going to be your best bet when you're camping. And I'll just quickly demonstrate that. I can grab a um, chainsaw to show you how good a secondary weapon can be here in some maps as well. There we go. So also, you're going to want to make sure your barrette is, you know, peeking out um, the proper distance kind of like tell you can see the scope is always um, what I try and do because when you do that you make sure your shots will shoot and it really sucks when you line up a perfect shot but it turns out you are a little bit too much in too far in the sandbag and so um, it hits the side of the sandbag instead of your target and so see someone's getting close ah I missed them Okay, so I'm quickly just going to show you the difference between a map you'll use a chainsaw in and a map you'll use a barrette in, and um, I'll show you how effective how effective each weapon will be in the map. So first things first is just to emphasize the difference. I'm not even going to bother using barrette. I'll just use a chainsaw. And barrette is always like until they've entered your sand entered your sandbag, you always want to use the barrette over chainsaw, but. Um, this is just, since I'm just trying to show you how to use chainsaw, I'm just going to use this alone. So first, when you're using chainsaw, you don't want to just run at them or creep towards them, especially when they're in your sandbag. You need to use your flight like that and you can move a lot quicker. I'll just demonstrate that like that. And so you want to use techniques like that to um, speed yourself up and get the kills before you get killed. And so, like I said, close quarters, the, entering your sandbag a lot, this is where you'll want to use a chainsaw. And so I'll just leave now and show you where you'll want to use an RPG. Okay, so I'm quickly just going to show you where you want to use an RPG. So a map like this, very open, you're not going to have a lot of close quarters stuff, so RPG is going to be very nice.
So, I mean, it, it's kind of self-explanatory. I mean, they're not going to be coming up on this ledge that much. Um, like, so RPG is just going to work a lot better than Chainsaw because Chainsaw, you're not going to really have the range unless they're coming from down here. But even then, I mean, you can just get them with, a, with um, an RPG. So pretty self-explanatory. If you don't expect to get too close to any enemies, you're going to want to stick with an RPG over Chainsaw. And that's that for that. Okay, so now I'm going to join into a match and show you what you can do with sandbag grooves. So a map like this, lots of people enter these sandbags, so chainsaw is going to be very nice. And as a side note, if you have a good position of cover you're going towards, don't just rush towards it. If you see you're getting fired at, take whatever's available and kill whoever's attacking you till you get there. Okay, anyways, so now that I'm here, um, as you can see, when I go this way, I'm fully submerged. I can shoot and everything. But when I actually try going... Oh. Okay. Um, so when I actually try um, to reverse the groove and go this way, you can see my head's kind of exposed and poking out. He's actually against the groove, and you can see his head's out too. See how I just sniped him? So when your head's out and see how I just got killed... Um, so when your head's poking out of the sandbag, I just had to do something quickly. But um, now that I'm back in a match, I will finish up talking about grooves. So as I showed you last time, um, when your head is exposed, you're going against the groove, you are more vulnerable. And especially to spam weapons like rifles and laser guns, you'll take a lot of damage from them and it makes a big difference. So see how he is in the groove? So this is a right facing groove. So watch what happens if I try and go left in this groove. Look, I can't get the same protection. So a lot of the times it's actually what it's actually um, beneficial to go with the groove, even if your targets are coming from behind, because you can block their fire, whatever you got to do, and then switch when they get close. And right now I really should have a chainsaw, but I don't. Um, but yeah, so you're going to want to always be lining up with the groove pretty much. There might be a few exceptions, but for the most part, line up with the groove. It makes a big difference. So not all maps actually have good sandbags. In a lot of maps, the sandbags are in awkward positions or they're in a position where really not a lot of people go, so you're not going to get a lot of kills. So in maps, like, and some just don't have them outright, like this one. So in maps like that, you're going to want to be working with something called locational camping. And in locational camping, you pick a spot that um, has a lot of cover, but it also gives you access to a lot of people. So in this space map, for example, you're going to want to be choosing a spot such as under like right in between the stairs here. This is a really good spot. And in this kind of semi transparent place, it's also a good spot. You have a lot of cover. And I actually find that I get um, that you have more access to kills if you're up here. So I usually like to camp there. And if you're camping up here, you'll want a chainsaw for people coming out of the portal. And I'll just quickly demonstrate um, how effective you can be even without sandbags. Locational camping really, really can be a lot more effective than sandbags a lot of the time. So I'll just demonstrate this to you. I'll probably, I'll get like five kills in a row and then hopefully you will have been convinced. And on a side note, you don't want to just stay in one spot. See how you're shooting me down from down there and I'm moving to kind of dodge his shots when you're camping even in sandbags you want to be doing the same thing you want to be kind of moving around waiting for an opportunity to shoot don't just sit there otherwise you're going to get killed by things like rpgs or they will chainsaw you or something and uh, um yeah <laughs> so just see how i'm using cover so it's all about being mobile actually ironically Camping is not just about sitting in the same spot. You need to know when to move your um, positions and you need to know what cover is good cover and what cover is not. And uh, ideally, um, you want to be making sure you can shoot at the enemy before they have a chance to figure out how they can get past your cover. And by doing that, you'll get a lot of kills. Okay, I think that's enough. 
So what I'm going to show you now is actually something that I picked up not too long ago, and it's actually using things like med kits and grenades as cover when you don't have it. So in some maps like this, the sandbags are in really bad positions, like really bad positions, and using them, you're not going to get very far. So see, this spot here is a great position, and... Um, what you're going to want to actually do is when the grenade spawns here, you can use this as cover because if somebody's shot hits it with like a barrette or RPG, it's actually going to soak up the damage, as you can see, like that, and um, keep you safe. And so you can actually use these little boxes to camp. And this is a really good spot here. So I'll just tell you like straight out, there's always a good spot to camp in every map. You just have to find it. Um, all right, well, that will wrap it up for the comprehensive camping guide. I hope everybody who watched learned a thing or two and um, you enjoyed. So if you have any questions about camping or anything like that, let me know below. And um, Or if you want any additional tips, let me know as well. And I will be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day and happy camping.